So hey guys, welcome to another video here at Financial Hub. Um, episode 45, 46, one of the two. I'm sorry about last week we weren't able to upload any video and that's normal, it normally happens. We had a bit of technical difficulties and if we were to upload the video, we'll have uploaded it very, very late. And we just said we'll do a recap this week and um, I'll cover the markets this week. So without further much I say, I just want us to look at what has been going on in the markets, then we'll do an analysis on the forex pairs that I'm looking at today, which I've actually, I did an analysis early in the morning when I woke up, and today basically we'll just go through uh, a, a few other stuff that I want you guys to note, okay? So, looking here at the market, so I have market news, this is our website at Financial Hub, for people who have not visited our site, this is our site, but before we get down to this, because I want to... Uh, tackle something else then this then we go down into the forex analysis for today so what have i been looking at what have i been uh, paying attention to so the previous saturday not this saturday the previous saturday i think that was on the uh first or second may when the mayor just began the other week uh bakshia 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 uh here's a full recap of warren buffett's news making comments at bakshia hathaway's annual meeting for those people who do not know Warren Buffett, this is the time you should know Warren Buffett. So I'm pretty sure there's a time we were doing a test with Ken and we went around asking people who are competing. I told him Warren Buffett is a famous person that people know and he said people don't know Warren Buffett. And we said, okay, let's go test it. We went asking people, people don't know who Warren Buffett is and people don't know who Jeff Bezos is. Only People only know Zuckerberg and... Uh, Bill Gates. So it's just so weird. These are people who should be known, especially if you're in finance or if you want to become an entrepreneur and such, you need to study these people. So who's Warren Buffett? So this is Forbes. So basically Forbes says Warren Buffett is the fourth uh, richest person in the world. So as you can see, they've highlighted, they're saying his net worth is 68.8 billion. He, had, he was much higher. Those are times he was around 90 billion dollars. He didn't, he hasn't hit the hundred dollar mark like uh, the only three people who have hit the $100 mark, that's Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and Bernard Arnold. Bernard Arnold is the owner of Louis Vuitton LVMH, so for those people who do not know him, you can research on him. And it's very good to know these rich people and what they're doing. So, in the last 24 hours, his net worth has dropped almost $1 billion, so $957 million. That is totally normal, nothing to be shocked about. These people lose and make billions in days. Uh, he's known as the Oracle of Omaha and he's the most, most successful investor of all time, okay? So one, one of the most successful, depending on how you're rating your successful investors. He runs uh, Bakshia Hathaway, so Bakshia Hathaway is his company, he's the CEO and chairman and the company owns 60 uh, companies. And just before we go far, uh, Warren Buffett is currently $89 billion. So for those people who are looking to retire at the age of 60, 65, think twice. Billionaires don't retire at that age. <laughs> so he owns six, the company owns 60 companies, including Geico, Battery Maker Duracell, and restaurant chain Dairy Queen. Uh, he's the son of, the US, of a U.S. congressman. He bought his first stock at the age of 11. Just think twice if you're starting to buy stocks right now. <laughs> and he's... And he first filed his tax at the age of 13. How many people here have filed their taxes? Um, he's promised to give away 99% of his fortune. So more than 60 billion of this, depending on that time, he'll be giving it away. Most of it will go to donations. So he's, in 2019, he donated 3.6 billion. He's a very good friend of Bill Gates. So he donated to the foundation. And in 2010, he launched the Giving Pledge, asking billionaires to commit uh, to donating half of their wealth to charitable causes. So that's just a background on who Warren Buffett is, do more research on him and just get to know him a bit better. So going back to what I was talking about, um, they, had, they always have an annual meeting, sort of like an AGM, but not really an AGM, uh, but they have a meeting for shareholders each and every year. So if you're a shareholder at his company, you have access to what he's saying. So why I really want to cover what he's saying uh, is because of what I talked about in the last video when I talked about do not rush uh, to be a professional trader. As you can see in this video, there's a, a Warren Buffett just won a $1 million bet. If you haven't watched that video, uh, be sure to watch it. I talked about that and I said over here, I read um, in 2007, legendary investor Warren Buffett made a $1 million bet against uh, some partners. 
uh, that hedge funds will not outperform the S&P 500 and he won't so currently I'm just in the meeting he talked about this and I just it's good I talked about that at the perfect time before this meeting came out and I just want to do a refreshment of what he said and he said stock markets uh, have produced a hundred dollars for every dollar invested since Buffett finished college that was in 1950 and that's quite a lot so looking at uh, market begins the meeting begins um, one thing to note that I carried away is Buffett says be careful how you bet and I talked about this on that previous video um, and he says anything can happen in the market here I don't believe anyone uh, and I quote what he says and I don't believe anyone knows what the market is going to do tomorrow next week next month next year so as I said in last week's video many people have been calling us asking us they want to invest buy oil um, buy these companies that have been falling my friend you're going to get one hell of a beating if you do not take care and invest wisely get the knowledge first stop rushing the market is always going to be here he said I know America is going to move forward over time so in the long run, the stocks, the uh, economies are all going to grow, but I don't know for sure, and we learned this on September 10th, uh, 2001, that was back then in the dot-com crash, and we learned it a few months uh, ago in terms of the virus. So anything can happen in the markets, okay? So that's one thing you should take away. Buffett, uh, he said, don't use borrowed money to participate in the markets. So... Especially if you do not know what you're doing. If you use borrowed money, you're going to really struggle paying it back because you can lose a lot of money when it comes to investing in the stock market. Legendary investor Warren Buffett still thinks America is the best bet out there, but noted people should not borrow money to participate in the market given the uncertainty around the coronavirus pandemic. So for those people who are rushing to get money from outside people, and if you've given someone your money, please take care because... Uh, I don't talk, I don't be pessimistic, but you know, so the best thing to do is to buy the S&P 500 uh, index Buffett says, that's the same thing I covered last week, Warren Buffett believes the average investor should buy the broad market for a long period of time instead of following stock picking advice of others. In the long run, if you invest in the S&P 500, you can make a lot of, a lot of money. Um, Buffett still thinks highly of Jerome Powell, so that's basically what I wanted. Something else you should note, Buffett says he was wrong about the airlines, and if you go higher you get to see uh, Buffett says he sold his entire stake in airlines. For those who do not know, he's a very, very big investor when he invests in a company. He doesn't just invest <clears throat> without doing his background research. But you can see over here he came out and noted that he was wrong about the airlines and he says Warren Buffett said he made an understandable mistake when valuing the airline stock. So be cautious when you're doing some of these investments. Uh, the best, uh, one of the most uh, successful investors has talked about that. He says over here the world has changed for airlines and I don't know how it's changed but I hope it corrects itself in a reasonably prompt way. Buffett said I don't know if Americans I don't know if Americans have now changed their habits or will change their habits because of the uh, extended period. I think there are uncertainty, uncertain, sorry, I think there are certain industries and unfortunately I think that the airline industry among others are really hurt by forced shutdown by events uh, feared by the coronavirus uh, control. And so basically that's what I wanted you guys to make sure. Um, Buffett says he's willing to do something very big but hasn't seen anything attractive. So he hasn't yet invested in this whole um, fall. Just to be sure, uh, just to give you a fact, he's sitting right now on $138 billion cash uh, and he hasn't yet invested. So he's been buying back his stocks and also sold a bit of some companies he was owning. And right now he's just sitting on cash. So $137 billion. So this is what people say. So you save when everything is going well. When things go bad, you're the one who's to help and buy back some uh, uh, some companies at very very discounted prices. So you can go through this and uh, pair. I mean, <laughs> um, this article when you get time. But that's what I wanted to cover. So something that's on the market market news. You can go to our website, uh, Financial Hub, and go to the market news right here and just check what we have. We've been talking about why stocks are. Uh, moving higher despite a contracting economy and high rates of unemployment fundamental look this week is it the right time to buy oil um, breaking updates 20 million 
20.5 million jobs lost, 15% of Americans are jobless. So things are getting worse out there for those people who do not know. So that's basically what I wanted you guys to see before we get down into analysis. Maybe if I just take why are stocks moving higher if you just want to get uh, my understanding on this. Uh, Ken is one who covered this. He did this today. Um, I think it was yesterday and he's covered uh, stocks in America are up more than 20% despite the high rate of unemployment. Last week the non-farm payrolls did show 14.7% uh, of Americans do not have uh, jobs at the moment. So some newbies don't understand the huge disparity between the economic world and the financial markets. In this article I will show you why. So something that Ken noted, markets are always ahead of reality. So uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact, something that investors came up with. Financial markets are always six to eight months ahead of economic reality. Markets always reflect what is likely to happen in the future. For example, the huge decline in February and March was a reflection of what will hit the economy due to COVID-19. The high rates of unemployment have already been priced in the markets before events themselves happen. So always ahead of reality. So just make sure, just come here and take a look at this, understand what Ken covered on this. Um, on the other side, looking at oil, um, some oil news, oil prices rally as uh, Saudi Arabia pledged to cut additional 1, point, uh, 1 million barrels per day. So that's something you should note what is happening around the world. So for those people wondering why oil is at such a consolidation right now, it's because there's a lot of uncertainty around it. Around it. With these production cuts, um, with uh, reopening of the economies, if that uh, demand will come back into the economy. We are not yet sure about that around the world. We are also cautious, as you can see somewhere here, they covered that over here. Uh, prices began Monday trading session in the red as the markets began to fear that the eased lockdowns could lead to second wave. So I'm sure most of you have heard of this second wave of COVID-19 cases as some data in China, South Korea and Germany uh, could suggest. So we're paying attention to that and just looking at what is happening in the markets as a whole and just enjoying what the market is telling us. So with that said, let's just jump straight into our analysis. So now we're down to um, gold. So let's just start with gold and I'll take a look at um, maybe three other pairs and then we can clear it off from there and end the day. So basically what I'm looking at at gold, what you can see, um, this is my weekly chart, okay? So we've been covering this for a while. Market was respecting this channel, broke above it. We've been respecting it, not gone back below it so currently what i'm watching is um i'm really 50 50 on gold so anything can happen on gold and currently what like you can see here i've written uh region to watch is 1675 okay so why is that a key crucial level as you can see market spiked uh 1675 so this is actually a wide range between let's say around 1675 and 1690 or 1700 all that region is a key region to watch so you can see but 1675 being our main uh point to uh to refer to so we can see market spiked over here over here market shot all the way down after spiking this level all the way down to 14 50 which was more than 200 pip move and then market shot all the way up with a lot of momentum back above that level and currently we have been respecting that level staying above it okay so we've been weaking it for the past few weeks weaking it but not getting that strong closure to go below it so if you go down to the daily chart what you're looking at is this is just now a highlight of what i'm really watching so 1680 so you, you're getting my point so that region between um 1675 1680 you can see over here we're getting that clearer uh defining level so market spiked short all the way below over here we had that market spiked almost uh touching 1700 with that beautiful <clears throat> tweezer uh from i mean not a tweezer a spinning top formation followed by that strong bearish formation and market fell all the way down after coming back up we had that strong breakout that's what we are waiting to watch okay so you can see this strong breakout is what gave us an indication of what might happen so that strong breakout and currently after t breaking that level we went all the way to 1730 around 1740 1745 that level market was rejected and currently we are playing around this region so between 6 1740 and 16 uh 75 16 60 level we're just dangling around this level so if you look at the four hour chart so basically what we're seeing on the weekly chart uh what we're seeing on the 
daily chart is that market is just in a sideways consolidation movement okay so currently what i'm watching on the four hour chart is to now understand okay what pattern is forming yes we're in a consolidation but there's always a pattern especially when you're doing the elliot wave analysis what's the pattern behind it so what i was watching is um actually i had such an analysis so i had an impulse correction impulse so i had this uh zero one two correction three uh and then i was looking at a four correction and i was expecting an abc then a five to be formed but we're getting this extended uh sort of uh correction forming at the moment and anything can happen after this clearly you can see on the four hour chart that this is a triangular formation so what are we expecting there are two things i can be expecting according to a analysis so if this was let's say three okay then we're expecting this a b c d e formation okay so what i'm watching is if market comes down to this level okay if we break down to this level around this region how are we going to respect this region are we going to break it and head further low or are we going to reject it and go and form new highs on the gold market above 1750 level so that is something i'm really paying attention to okay but what we need to keep in mind is that if that was a complete impulse wave okay then this is just a sort of a consolidation and market is preparing to shoot further down we've been discussing with ken ken has been sharing with our private members on the private group that is expecting this market to fall further down especially if this triangle formation is broken to the downside and that is something i'm also paying attention to okay so if you take that as zero this is a b c d e we can see that market is already gunning up and preparing to shoot further down if this momentum is kept up so we can expect market to shoot especially to this level uh first target looking at this uh how it will reject or how it will break this trend line okay this triangular formation how it will respect 1675 key level okay so we're looking at those two levels paying key key attention how market would respect it if this region is broken okay if this whole region is broken to the downside then we can be expecting this triangular formation uh to be in sync uh to give us that information that the market is heading further low so we're expecting this is what i'm watching currently 50 50 just waiting for what market will give me that indication uh and just that basic analysis is what i'm watching for so right now i'm not fighting with what's happening over here i'm not taking trades over here because i'm expecting anything to happen from this so pay attention to that if you're a trader of gold if that's what you're watching be open-minded to anything happening in the market so we can be expecting that push to the upside that's currently what i'm watching or push to the downside uh to continue going down and continuing this consolidation uh correction phase to the downside remember one thing a consolidation can last for a very long time okay and something else that i've not shared with you why do i have this line up here so when market was moving up we sort of had this bounce here bounce here so i drew a trend line and i took a channel formation okay so i just duplicated this so you can just clone that you get that and i brought it to the downside so using this down region as my guide so i took that as my starting point so bringing it up you can see um i was watching this so we can see market came and bounced off this level came up we rejected by this triangle then we came uh we sort of almost got that rejection let me zoom that so you can see this pin bar formation over here market almost tried to reject that formation but we broke below it okay so those are signs that i'm watching before i get that indication of where market is going so we can have that just retest of this level and market can fall down so we can be waiting to see how market would respect 1705 later on today or maybe tomorrow mostly today because the market is just dangling around there so between 1705 1710 we see if market will shoot will uh, break out retest and head further down to our other target level around 1685 1680 so currently that's what i'm watching on gold uh, don't confuse you much with this one i'm still 50 50 waiting for that good analysis to show me where market will be heading and then i'll make sure to benefit from it so that's basically what i have on this and let's move on to the next pair so euro usd what am i watching so basically euro usd has been in a consolidation uh for the last um since mid since beginning of april we've just been playing around here so for a whole month we've just been dangling around here not getting that uh, really direction of where market is going so we can see 
uh, between this up level market has just been going up, down, up, down, up, down after get uh, after getting this strong impulse wave. So you can see this previous impulse, impulse to the downside, almost an impulse to the upside. We didn't create that new high and market has entered that consolidation level, not forming really new lows or new highs at the moment. Okay, so what pattern is forming since we are in that consolidation level, sort of like what I'm seeing on gold. So currently I have this expanding uh, expanding triangle uh, is what I'm paying, paying key, key attention to. And this blue line is what is acting as my midpoint. Okay. So we can see the blue line acting as my midpoint, meaning that if market breaks above, I'm looking for market to go touch the upper boundary of this expanding triangle. Or if it remain below, I am still very bearish. For example, right now, I'm still very, very bearish. I'm waiting to see if market will come, uh, break down below and come and touch this uh, level. Okay. In line, we can see our support level around here. Okay which acted as a previous support over here is what i'm watching market can also come and spike that level if we're coming to the downside before we get a momentum which i'm really paying attention to if we'll come to that level and get that push to the upside okay so that's a pattern i'm really watching that's what i can say right now i'm not on any i'm not on this trade as well just paying attention to how market is behaving around this level so that's what i'm expecting if you go down to the one hour chart um basically nothing much as well um just a rejection of what is happening on this level let me get rid of this just uh watching what how market is respecting this level we can see that market came with a lot of momentum but we got a strong strong rejection and now market is just dangling around here so that's what i'm expecting on this one just waiting to see if market will get that push further down okay so I'll update you on what happens on this maybe next week, but that's what I have on this. So just let's move on to USD card. USD card. So just like all other pairs, market has been in a consolidation as well. So you can see uh, 1.425 this level and 1.385 level have acted as our resistance and support levels respectively. So that's what I've been watching uh, and mainly I've been keeping our students updated on our subscription portal. And that's basically what we've been watching. So on the forward chart, okay, so we have this. So what pattern is forming just like all the others we've been watching so i have this descending triangular formation so we've seen so far uh, on gold we've been having that contracting triangle symmetric triangle basically on euro usd we've seen that expanding triangle and this one we're seeing um a descending triangle so that is basically what i'm saying pay key attention to how market if market is consolidating what pattern is forming at the back of it okay so we sort of have this triangular formation and um, I'm watching to s expecting such a formation A, B, C, D, E. So I've been sharing with the private members on our private group that I have been uh, expecting bearish momentum on this, especially yesterday. If you if you if you've seen our website on our article, I was sort of saying shy away from targets. So I was targeting this level, okay but yesterday the whole of yesterday we had that strong bullish momentum okay and uh currently you can see what i have highlighted over here what i was paying attention to so this was my liquidity level okay so this is a very strong liquidity and why is it a liquidity level for me so before i was watching as you can see over here market was coming down in a downtrend had that strong uh fast a rejection market shot all the way up with that strong momentum bullish momentum then shot all the way down uh we sort of sort of had that um close below the liquidation level but market came with a strong rejection shot to form new highs we came back down rejected it back again but this time market could not reject it for long it was broken to the downside sort of had that retest then market shot all the way down we came back up market came and sort of had this consolidation over here which is the same thing that is happening here we will cover that then market strongly broke above and shot all the way up to this level and then we sort of had this correction coming down market shot back up we had that uh double top formation uh this was a perfect beautiful entry with that shooting star forming over there followed by that strong uh bearish momentum bearish close and then market came and broke strongly below this level okay so currently if you pay attention to what is happening at the moment so 
I was expecting a strong rejection of this level like what has been happening before especially when we broke below this so I was really expecting if market was to come back up we have that rejection of this level and then we continue going back down that was my thought process behind it but we can see what is happening here okay what is happening here is the same thing that happened here just with a little bit less momentum okay so this bullish close above was really really strong this one was sort of it didn't get that much much momentum but either way we closed above the liquidation region okay so that is something i'm paying attention to so i'm really cautious on this i'm not as strongly bearish as i was but we can still see this formation going further down but if you go down to the one hour chart okay we sort of have this channel formation in play how did i get to draw this channel formation so basically when market came back down we had this level over here if you go down to the 30 minutes 30 minutes chart i sort of had this so when market came down we sort of market was dangling i i noticed the market was just playing around this level so at first i had sort of uh this formation so this is basically a wedge formation okay so i took that as um uh, a b c d e that was a very good entry and market shot all the way up so i just extended this to see where it was originating from and we can see it was originating from that point that level so i just took this duplicated it and watching to see where market will be heading on the upside so this is what i was expecting i was expecting market to come and touch this level that's why i shared with the private group members for the ones who are watching this private group that's why i shared yesterday uh and said 1.46 1.406 level was a level i was watching if market will be hit at that level we can see market shot all the way to that point touched it to the t and right now market is sort of uh looking for direction of either way uh where market will help so if you go back to the one hour chart what you're basically saying is that that's that's the pattern i'm watching this strong close is what closed above that liquidation level but we're not getting what you're seeing is market is breaking down and sort of not getting that strong momentum and like this previous part this is where we got that liquidation level market broke below we sort of had that consolidation level uh correction basically then market shot further up so this can be the same thing just duplicating happening yet again sort of a consolidation then market shoots up especially if we're getting that dollar uh strength on across the board as we can see on euro sd we're expecting further lows to be hit so right now i can be a bit cautious on this one won't have that strong um indication of uh whether to go long or short i'm just sitting on the fence to see how will ha what will happen so basically what i'm watching is if market will break back below the liquidation level and see if market will be heading to that target level we've been aiming at at 1.385 if not if market comes back with momentum to the upside then we can be expecting uh 1.4150 to be hit yet again so this one i'm just sitting in between the fence waiting to see what will happen on the market so that's basically what i have on this one and let's look at aussie dollar Aussie dollar, very good analysis on this one. Um, bearish on US Aussie dollar. Um, basically, what we've been covering for the past few weeks, we've been seeing that impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse. Okay, so that one, two, three, four, five drive that market sort of came from that A, sort of retraced back, forming a double top of that formation. Market rejected it yesterday. This was a bearish close from yesterday, and now we might be expecting this pair may be to fall further lower okay so that's the perspective i'm seeing on this one but if you go down now to the forward chart how is the pattern actually forming so um if i just duplicate the numbering that you've seen on the other side so you sort of have this one two three yeah this is my four that five and then what i'm just saying is that a b c Give me a sec. Let me look for that. Um, here we go. Here we go. We make it visible. Oh, no. So go back to the four-hour chart. So currently, what I'm expecting on this one is that market can be, after forming that A B C D, we can be waiting to see if market will break, and come to retest this fourth level okay so this four level previous four level 
we see if it will act again as another support level okay so but what, what i'm paying attention to at the moment is that we've had that double correction at that point but market is being uh, rejected by this channel formation so this channel formation started down here we can see we had that bounce bounce uh we can form this other bounce and currently this bounce is what is uh this region is what is really really holding this market and there's a lot of confluence at this level as well if i zoom it we can see this previous it acted as resistance then came and act market broke above it then came and acted as support market shot further down came broke below it market acted as resistance yet again shot below then we broke up above it had sort of that retest yet again market shot up then now we're currently uh, rejecting that level so key 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 level to pay attention to um of how market would respect this level okay so we can see market has been moving sideways as well so this is just a sideways movement okay forming this double top uh double bottom down here market has not uh, almost all pairs are just consolidating at the moment so what am i watching on this one i'm watching to see if this trend line will be broken maybe be broken have a retest then market to fall all the way to 0 0.6260 level okay but if if it's not broken we're watching to see how market will play around this level if we're going back up will we break above this uh 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 resistance level yet again or will we just reject it um for another third time then market shoots back below so pay key attention to this we might see a strong strong uh break below this level later on today or later on in the week um timing might be a bit tricky but that's basically what i'm watching on aussie dollar but overall i can say i'm more of bearish than i am bullish because of this upward momentum that is not really coming at the moment okay so if you have that with that said what are we looking at when it comes to ga so ga we've been bearish for the longest time and basically you see this whole region after touching 61.8 when market has been dropping within this channel formation beautiful channel formation i got to compliment the ga for that we can see market has been dropping further down this was a very high probable trade i shared this with the group members and i told them it was a very high probable analysis that will play out and that was last week on sunday before markets started breaking down okay what was i looking at i was looking at aussie dollar so aussie dollar i was seeing this strength coming and with this aussie dollar strength that basically means um ga can be falling because this is um british pound against the australian dollar apart from that i wasn't only looking at the uh at the Aussie dollar in relation to this, I was also looking at GU. So here's my GU analysis. So GU is also on a sideways movement. When that was happening on that Sunday formation, it was around here. So we were seeing the pound was about to drop. Okay, so we were seeing pound weakness and Aussie dollar strength that gave this uh, pair that momentum to just fall all the way down to where it is currently at the moment. So that's basically what I've been seeing. Uh, one hour chart, what are we seeing? We can see we had this consolidation level. Um, basically the whole of yesterday, market broke above. We're seeing now market uh, sort of coming back down to maybe break this lows and continue further down okay so that's basically what i'm watching if the pound weakness is maintained we can see this pair maybe continuing to drop um with aussie dollar strength if maybe aussie dollar continues to the upside then a, then there's a good potential on this one but before we get that before we make that conclusion okay there's also a possibility of this market shooting further up okay so if you go back to the four hour chart you can see let me take you back to history what do we have on our history class so you can see we we um we rejected this level before okay so when we're coming down market rejected it and ever since market just shot all the way up okay then currently market has been coming back down we rejected this level sort of tried to shoot up but market broke all the way down we came back we had that strong momentum break market shot all the way up after having that uh rejection at that level market came down we rejected that level tried to shoot up but market didn't really hold it and market dropped below so we might be seeing maybe a retest of that level okay so we might we might see uh that level being retested yet again you can see market coming back to this level um if you break above we can be seeing that momentum coming to that side but there's also a possibility a very high possibility of getting that rejection and market shoots further down so that's basically what i have for you guys i hope you've enjoyed the video basic analysis we share this on our private groups every single day we update people on uh trades we're taking um just looking at just as a guide not telling you to copy trade 
our trades but just as a guide to help you be confident in your trade and also know that we're doing the same thing when it comes to losses we also lose money i've lost money on usd card yesterday which is totally fine hasn't dented my account that much about less than one percent around one percent of my account um because i took a trade at that p level okay so it's normal taking losses but always getting that strength to come back in the market and see what is happening so that's all i have for you guys this week and i'll be seeing you guys in next week's uh forex market breakdown This is the time we tell you people to sit tight and watch the market closely. Don't miss a moment. Don't miss a moment. Don't miss a moment. Don't mess with the trend. Don't mess with the trend. Don't mess with momentum. Don't mess with moment. Eh, hey, I've <laughs>